There are two main interactions with matter within the diagnostic ranges of x-ray. One of them is Compton effect and the other is photoelectric effect. First we'll be discussing Compton effect. Compton effect is what we call scatter. It occurs at moderate energy levels. It includes loss of energy, ionization, and it reduces contrast and adds fog to the film. It's also a source of occupational dose and increases with higher KVP. The most important concept that we need to know about Compton effect is that is what we call scatter. Compton effect is scatter. Compton effect is what causes the scatter which creates the fog on our film or creates the occupational dose for the worker. So the x-ray photon is headed in one direction and then it changes direction whatever direction that is but not the direction that we want it to go. Now when that x-ray photon interacts with that atom of that matter uh, say it be the patient or whatever we're x-raying the x-ray photon interacts or kinda hits the outer shell electron. This action will actually reduce the energy of that x-ray photon. That electron, whatever energy it holds, will absorb some of that photon energy from the x-ray. Now once this happens, once that electron gains the energy of, of some of that x-ray photon, it will then be knocked out of its orbit, which leaves that atom unstable because it lost one of its electrons. It wants all of its electrons and now it lost one. So that's what we call ionization, when the atom does not have all of its electrons. And that makes it unstable and it wants to react. So we ask ourselves, why is Compton effect such an important concept? Well, it's because it occurs at energy levels in the diagnostic range, which means we see it a lot when we're doing our x-rays. This is one of the reasons why it's very important that we use the correct KVP when we're x-raying certain parts and we're not doing too much or going too low because as you increase your KVP within the appropriate range, it'll actually decrease the amount of Compton effect, which is what we want. Why do we want to reduce Compton effect? Well, one of the reasons is that it will reduce our contrast in our film. Some films we want to have appropriate contrast, we want high contrast, but the Compton effect will reduce the contrast. It will give it an overall gray appearance or a foggy look on the film. So that's what we call fog. It used to be that we had a film fog when we used to use film and the film would actually be fogged but now with digital radiology it actually has improved on uh, reducing those scattered x-rays. If a low contrast foggy film doesn't bother you, one thing that will sway you from using appropriate kilo electron volts or kilovoltage peaks when completing your x-rays is the occupational dose. The main source of occupational dose comes from the Compton effect. The Compton effect concept is that the x-ray photon hits the body and goes in a different direction. Well, where do you think that direction is? That direction is either another area on the film, it's 180 degrees back where the tube is, or the person operating the x-ray machine. And this is why we have the lead and other protective devices when doing x-ray or fluoro. The next effect I would like to talk about is photoelectric effect. Photoelectric effect. Photoelectric effect is what we call absorption. 
the x-ray interacts with the inner case shell, ionization occurs, it results in a photoelectron, a characteristic cascade can occur, character S the character x-rays never leave the body, it's the source of the patient dose, and it also decreases with higher KVP settings. The photoelectric effect is what we call absorption. So absorption means that the x-ray goes in but doesn't come out. The body absorbs it and it's never going to the film. And this is important because this is what's creating our image. This is what we need to get our differential absorptions. In photoelectric effect, ionization occurs. The x-rays interact with the inner case shell electron and a photoelectron is produced. That photoelectron will actually absorb all that energy from that x-ray minus the binding energy for that electron of that particular atom. Sometimes once that x-ray photon hits that electron and that electron becomes a photoelectron because it's in the inner shell another electron will want to fill it to stabilize that atom. And this is called a characteristic cascade effect. So a characteristic cascade effect will move an electron from an outer shell into an inner shell. When an electron moves to an area of high energy to lower energy, an x-ray is produced. In photoelectric effect, this x-ray energy is so small that it doesn't leave the body and it never reaches the film. And that's why we get an absorption because it just reacts with other atoms and never has enough energy to leave the body. Again, photoelectric effect is very important because this is how we create our images. This is how we get that differential absorption and we can actually have a outlined image of whatever anatomy we're looking at. It's also important because this is the main source for the patient's dose. This is why it's important when a patient gets a radiography exam, they are informed that they will get some kind of radiation dose. Again, we're supposed to use an optimal amount of KVP when we're x-raying our patients. But if you use more KVP, it'll actually decrease this interaction of photoelectric effect. So just like Compton effect, the more kilovoltage peak you use or the more energy this x-ray photon has, it has less chance of a photoelectric effect. The more KVP, the more penetration, the less chance of it staying in the body, which if you use a KVP that's too high, then you'll burn out your image and you'll never get the reaction you need to get the proper x-ray. Hey guys, I'm CA. I am a radiologic technologist and I have extensive experience in the field. I also teach it and I'm creating these videos for you to have something to listen to or watch, whichever is more comfortable for you, but something you can just listen to if you want to relax, you want to stop reading, or if you want to watch a video that's very informative on particular subjects. I hope you like it and if you have any questions or any concerns or any uh, thing that you uh, agree or 